am here today to talk to you about the extremely challenging job that some of you may already be doing or may have already done or perhaps will do. I'm referring to caregiving for a person who is suffering from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And again, my name is Lisa Skinner. I am a professional Alzheimer's disease and dementia behavior specialist. I have been doing this for over 25 years, and I also am the author of the award-winning and best-selling book, Not All Who Wander Need Be Lost, and the new book, which is called Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's, Its Secret Faces. One of the things that I've been doing for many, many years is training caregivers how to care for those who are suffering from this heartbreaking disease. And I do, trust me, understand that being a caregiver to someone suffering from Alzheimer's disease and dementia is without a doubt, one of the most daunting roles that a caregiver can undertake. I have had eight of my own family members suffer from some form of dementia. There are over a hundred diseases, brain diseases that cause dementia. And one of the, and I have actually um, helped in the role of a caregiver with several of those family members. So I've walked in your shoes. But I also realize that there are so many aspects of living with dementia that are unexpected and can surface out of nowhere at any time. I call these the hidden or secret faces of dementia. And as many of, as, uh, as many of you know, they show up unannounced and are unpredictable as a California earthquake. And as Sherelle mentioned, I'm a California girl. I've been through a lot of earthquakes in my days living in California, and they do come out of nowhere. So I kind of relate that to what it's kind of like being a caregiver for somebody with dementia because you don't know what to expect. And that's the very reason why it's so important to be prepared and to be equipped with as many tools as you can collect. So today, let's take a closer look at what living with dementia is truly like for a person and how preparing yourself with these strategies can truly make a difference to you and the person you're caring for. It's important to take steps to learn about the many challenges you will be facing as your role as a caregiver and steps you can take to help yourself and to be more effective in administrating this care. You want to engage in activities and actions that can improve any situation versus escalating your situation into a catastrophic situation. So think about this and relate it to your own personal life. So imagine you grew up in a small town America, never having been anywhere else but that place you grew up in and the place you are familiar with. Well, you're all grown up and you want to venture out, so you decide to take a trip to a foreign country. You land at the airport, and as soon as you get off that plane, you look around and everything is unfamiliar to you. The signs giving you directions are in a foreign language. You feel insecure and handicapped that you cannot even find the baggage claim area. So you ask a few people for help, but they look at you like you have two heads. Why? Because they don't understand a word you are saying. Now you feel lost and displaced and not sure what you can do or who you can turn to for help. Now you need to find a way to your hotel, but again, all the signage is in a foreign language and you still can't find anybody who speaks your language. Now you're starting to feel very anxious, alone and scared. And the best you are able to figure out is that boarding this certain bus 
will take you to your hotel. So you get on board and pray that it was the right decision. So the bus takes off and hits the road. Cars are flying by in all directions. And now you're starting to feel dizzy because the bus is on the opposite side of the road from what you're used to. And the driver is on the opposite side of the bus from what you're used to. And it feels for sure like you're going to crash. You begin to feel panicky and ask yourself, what was I thinking by coming here? Well, what I've just described is similar scenario to a person living with dementia, but they have not taken a trip to a foreign country. They're right in their own familiar surroundings that they don't recognize anymore. And this happens every single day of their lives. This is their new world. When you can't communicate and get your needs and wants heard, you will find alternative ways to do so. And they typically manifest in the way of a variety of behaviors that we as caregivers see every day. The most common association that people make with Alzheimer's disease is that people who suffer from it can't remember things. Well, this is true. Memory loss is the hallmark of living with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. However, the scope of the disease and the way it affects people is far more complicated than just memory loss and confusion. So my goal is to zoom out of the paradigm of it being exclusively a memory loss condition and shift people's understanding of just how dramatically this disease impacts the lives of those who have it, as well as their caregivers and the family members. Other aspects of living with Alzheimer's disease that people are not even aware exists or are not even aware that they are a common part of the disease, for example, are wandering, delusions, hallucinations, repetition, not recognizing loved ones, suspiciousness, and paranoia. These are just some of the common behaviors associated with dementia. And as I proceed, I will explain why some of these behaviors occur, as well as how to recognize them and also how to effectively react and respond to them. There are effective ways to respond and there are ineffective ways to respond. Because living with dementia is unlike anything you can imagine, like falling into a rabbit hole and entering a world unlike anything you've ever known before. And one, again, that's completely unfamiliar to you, no matter where you are. So let me give you some examples. If the person that you are caring for suddenly doesn't recognize you and they start calling you by a different name, well, how would you react to that? How about this? If the person you are caring for all of a sudden begins insisting that her spouse is on his way over to pick her up, but you knew that spouse had been deceased for years. How would you respond to that? If the person that you are caring for accuses you of stealing something of theirs, but they really misplaced it, how would you react to that accusation? And if you are a caregiver and you are leading the person you care for to the shower, like you probably do on a regular basis, and you enter the bathroom, then out of nowhere, she starts screaming, no shower, no shower. Would you even know to stop to consider that that person may have just seen herself in the mirror, saw her reflection, did not recognize herself, and was convinced that there was a stranger watching her in that bathroom? And that is what triggered that response. Well, if you didn't know about the phenomenon called stranger in the mirror, 
then of course you wouldn't have even considered that as being the trigger and you wouldn't know what to think or what to do. But believe it or not, this actually can be an easy fix. So here's just one of the solutions that you could try if this happened to happen to you as a caregiver. So lead your person back out of the bathroom and get him or her interested in something else just for a short period of time. Go back into the bathroom, cover up the mirror with a towel or a sheet, and then try again. So this time, if the person doesn't have access to their reflection in the mirror, they won't be able to see themselves, they won't um, not recognize themselves, and then they won't think a stranger is standing waiting to watch them undress. And that's really what the crux of the problem is. So these are just a few of the challenges that caregivers face on an ongoing basis when caring for somebody with a damaged brain. And as you can tell from the examples I've given, it does take very specialized training to know how to effectively respond to situations that arise like the ones that I've just described. But why do these things happen? In my experience, and I'm going back almost 50 years now, even though I've been doing this professionally for over 25 years, but my grandmother was my very first experience with somebody with Alzheimer's disease. And that was almost 50 years ago. And one of the things that I've learned is that it's equally important to understand what's at the root of the cause of these behaviors that show up out of nowhere. We also know that unfortunately, there is no amount of reasoning that can talk the person who is experiencing a delusion or out of this belief. So we must rely on alternate strategies to manage these behaviors. According to the Alzheimer's Association, approximately one out of three Alzheimer's sufferers will develop paranoia or suspiciousness during the progression of their disease. And this is because people with brain disease suffer from impaired reasoning. They may easily misinterpret others' intentions and have difficulty understanding what is being communicated to them. Their ability to separate fact from fiction can become impaired, a lot of times will become impaired. And in a person living with dementia, the ability to perceive things the same way we do is diminished. It's not the same. They don't have the cognitive skills to think the way people with healthy brains do anymore. Well, that will affect the person's judgment, both visually and conceptually. Their level of confusion will increase over time because they are losing the ability to make sense of what their senses take in. And consequently, this can produce several adverse reactions such as fright and or combative behaviors. We see this every day. Because the brain is at the center of our thought processes and is central to our lives. It takes in information from our daily experiences and enables us to make sense of our world. Our memories are the threads that sew our lives together in sequence and continuity. However, when our memory begins to fail, the tie to our life unravels. Like stranger in the mirror example, when a person with dementia does not even recognize their own reflection in a mirror. And then the first memory problems with Alzheimer's disease typically occur with recent or short-term memories. The person has difficulty recalling events that, are, that have happened most recently, like what they had for breakfast this morning. However, their long-term memories can remain intact far into the disease. Think of a short of, of a person's short-term memory as having a switch that can be turned on 
and off like a light. When the switch is turned on, it's functioning normally. But when that switch gets flipped off, the short-term memory malfunctions and the person with dementia then must pull from their long-term memories to be able to put their life into perspective that makes sense to them. Because the long-term memory is all that they have available to them when the short-term memory switch is all of a sudden turned off. This sends the person back in time to a different period of their life. But for the time being, that becomes their reality until that short-term memory switch is turned back on. In the beginning stages of the disease, the short-term memory is on most of the time, more than it's off. In the mid stage of the disease, it switches from on to off, on to off, on to off, without any warning. And then by the end of the disease, that switch is off more than it's on. In some people at the end stage of their dementia, they have no recollection of any short-term memories. That switch went off permanently. So now they are having to pull from their past memories and They're talking about things, they're stuck somewhere in the past, and they're talking about things that make absolutely no sense to you, but it makes perfect sense to them because it's real, it's their reality. You must listen for the cues of what they're talking about to determine what part of their life they have regressed to. Are they talking about, where's my mommy? Um, the home they lived in when they were growing up? Are they talking about their children, their new baby, their jobs? Pay attention to what they're saying and then you will be able to piece together what part of their life they actually have regressed to. And then you can do what we call join their reality, which, I teach as part of my new training course. As you can only imagine, a person experiencing lost memories may feel confused when the world as they knew it stopped, starts disappearing and their past and their present collide because this is exactly what happens to them. As you can imagine, this can only elicit feelings of fear and anger as well as unveil uncharacteristic behaviors of that person. Confusion can be triggered by lost trains of thought, mixed up memories, or a sudden change in the environment. It can even be triggered in a change from one caregiver to another. This is part of the most difficult aspect of caring for somebody with Alzheimer's disease slash dementia, because you never know at any given moment what is going to trigger a change in their behavior and then importantly, what caused it. And it's up to you to figure it out. But what we call reminiscence therapy can help people with dementia cope with the loss of their core selves another common occurrence of living with dementia. Um, our memories keep us plugged into the work and play of our lives, what we do and how we do it. It also allows us to understand how we fit into the social fabric because our memories store key habits, beliefs, and values that make us unique and vital. But sadly, Dementia profoundly affects a person's ability to keep their world in order and therefore impacts the way they live in that world and how they get along with other people in it.
Most people become confused when situations go beyond the limits of their thinking ability. And then as the disease progresses, the mind's ability to avoid confusion declines because they've lost the normal filters and protections they once had when their brains were healthy. So you will learn to put your Sherlock Holmes hat on. And through a process of elimination, the underlying reason for seeing these changes in a person's mood and their personality and their behaviors can be uncovered. The important thing to understand is these behaviors, these symptoms, these signs, these changes that you are witnessing are, are caused by the disease. These are not people trying to make your life difficult or miserable. One of the things that happens to us when um, our brains are changing due to the damages being done by brain disease is we forget how to be logical and make decisions about things. So we then fall back and rely on our emotions. And most of what you're seeing in the mid to latter stages of the disease are people just reacting on emotion because they no longer can separate um, a big deal from not such a big deal. Because with dementia, that ability is gradually lost. So Alzheimer's disease is all about looking backward as loved ones lose precious memories as their short-term memories erode and they struggle with their cognitive loss. Our seminars help caregivers identify memory loss and behavioral issues while maintaining a focus on the future. We look backward to the memories that are lost to our loved one from Alzheimer's disease but we look forward to new treatments and potential cures for Alzheimer's and dementia that are already on the horizon. For instance, adult stem cells are showing the promise of regenerating damaged neural cells to improve motor functions of the brain. This, this is an area of science that's been researched for 20, 30 years. Um, so check out our website, truthliesalzheimers.com and read the forward by Dr. Anand Srivastava to explore the advances in regenerative therapy or stem cell, cell therapy. He is one of the pioneers of this research. Today, over 6 million people in the US are living with Alzheimer's disease. Every 66 seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, just in the US. The Alzheimer's Association projects that by the year 2050, that number is going to more than double. And worldwide, there will be just, the numbers are going to be staggering of how many people develop Alzheimer's disease. And to add insult to injury, Due to the COVID pandemic, we are seeing shifting changes to how we care for people living with this heart-wrenching disease. But one thing is certain, we will be needing a lot of specially trained caregivers. And again, this is what we do. We educate and train caregivers new and effective ways of communicating. So if you've ever experienced a person with hearing loss, you're not going to just ignore them like they're a piece of furniture and they don't exist. The key is you're going to find alternative ways to communicate with them. This is not involving restoring, having their hearing restored. It involves you learning new specialized skills and techniques to be able to continue that communication process. This is exactly the same concept as caring for somebody or having a family member living with Alzheimer's disease. 
They lose the ability to communicate with you, to tell you their wants and their needs. So they tell you in other ways, and it usually shows up in these common behaviors. But the encouraging part is that there are many effective tools out there that can make your jobs a lot less stressful and can help take the guesswork out of a lot of these situations that will, and I mean will, <laughs> arise on a daily basis. Wouldn't it be helpful if you had these tools in your tool belt? It would be helpful to both you and the person you're caring for. My co-author, Douglas Collins, and I, we have a new book coming out, the one I showed you, Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's, Its Secret Faces. And we've also written a very comprehensive course that accompanies the book to teach you all of the things and much more about a lot of the examples I've given you here today. So if any of you are interested in learning these strategies and in learning um, the techniques for caring for those with dementia, you can learn more on our website. Again, that's truthliesalzheimers.com. We um, will be set up for CEU credits. And um, as part of this training, we will emphasize the importance of being aware of things like stranger in the mirror. So as caregivers and family members, you too can recognize what signs and behaviors to look for to put your lo loved one at ease if these situations arise. We also explore strategies I mentioned earlier, like joining their reality, reminiscence therapy, life stations, among many others. So anyone who signs up for the course as um, that heard about it from this event, we will have very, very special pricing for you. And we will also include the new book and the workbook, which is a $45 value. Um, so what you can do today, if you're interested in finding more details out about our training course, is just go onto the website and join our mailing list. And we will send out detailed information of when the first course will be offered. It will be a six week course and we don't have the date set in stone yet, but we're working on it. So if you join our mailing list, we will send you the information. Thank you again for listening to um, the information regarding caring for people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. It also includes people suffering from many of the other brain diseases such as frontotemporal lobe disease and Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease. Um, there, again, there's over a hundred diseases that cause dementia, but b dementia being an umbrella term for the signs and symptoms that are caused by brain disease, they're all interrelated and are very similar. So I hope this you have found this very helpful and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.